What's up guys, it's your boy Serge. So today we're gonna to talk about the Dell XPS 15 inch. So this is one awesome laptop and I've been wanting to talk about it more and more ever since I did my gaming test video on it. Today we're just gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about the good, the bad, and we're gonna see if this particular laptop is gonna be good for you guys. Dell's design team has done an excellent job crafting this laptop. The carbon fiber finish on the inside and the metal body on the outside, it looks really, really nice. Even the very bottom back of the laptop just looks excellent. If you're not touching metal, you're touching carbon fiber. The one of the sleekest designs I've ever seen. It also comes with a really nice trackpad. However, I did have mixed feelings about this keyboard. When trying to open the laptop up, you're gonna be forced to use both hands. There's no way around that. There's no groove for you to stick your fingers in and uh, it's just a real annoying hassle. When you prop it open, you're gonna see that there is a ton of glare on the screen. Uh, this has to be the number one most glare-filled laptop I've ever used. Uh, me personally, I love Dell products, but uh, the screen it just has so much glare. It doesn't matter what you're doing, there's tons of glare. The highlight of the screen is that it is a 4K screen, it's a touch screen, but it's also a 15 inch screen and a 13 inch body, which is really, really hard to come by. In fact, I think this is one of the first of its kind. Look at how small those bezels are. Very impressive stuff. Even with the screen at max brightness, you're still gonna see a ton of glare. The 4K screen is really gorgeous. The trackpad is very precise, and the touchscreen is also quite precise. Didn't run into any issues there. When you're feeling the keyboard, it does feel a little bit mushy. Uh, I really expected a keyboard similar to the Surface Book or the MacBook Pros. On the side there, you see the two air vents, one for the GPU, one for the CPU. So this computer here is rocking a quad core, 3.5 gigahertz CPU, really fast, 16 gig RAM, NVIDIA 960M for really good graphics, and one terabyte of solid state drive. That's really fast. When I was picking this device up, I wanted it to replace my MacBook Pro, so I knew it had to be spec'd out accordingly. Flip it over on its side, and let's take a look at some of these ports. Got the power connector, USB 3.0, HDMI, USB Type-C, and the headphone jack. I was pretty impressed. They did give you quite a lot of ports on this machine. My only gripe is that I think there should be a third USB 3.0. Our standard SD card slot, USB 3.0, and a little surprise. I actually thought this was a great addition. You can check your battery life of your computer without having to turn on. When you're charging it, an LED on the front turns on, and you also have LEDs on your actual connector cord. So when it's plugged into the wall, you know that it has power. So you're never wondering if there's energy going through there. My only gripe about this power cord is that I feel like it might not be up to standards with other power cords. You can see the stitching on the sides there. I feel like that's really low quality. I feel like they should have added some better build quality to that. Now, I'm not sure what they were thinking when they made the rear part, but it is very elegant. You have three screws on the side, four at the top, and these rubber feet. Oh my God. If there's anything Dell did right, it's with these rubber feet. It's really sturdy. It looks great. Below you have the air vent. This is where the cold air is gonna enter. And you have your XPS logo some speakers, pop the XPS logo open and you'll be disappointed to find FCC information. And you have two speakers at the top. They actually don't sound very good. For the majority of the time when you're holding this laptop, you're either coming in contact with the metal or the carbon fiber. It has an extremely nice premium feel. All the edges are really well put together. 
there's no sharp edges, there's no screws coming out of nowhere, there's no lines that don't need to be there. Everything just looks like it should. There's this really nice taper effect that makes the laptop look thinner than it actually is. Remember those rubber feet we talked about? Well, here's why they're so good. The thing is, they're almost a full half circle. So they prop the laptop up quite a bit. They give it enough airflow. And on top of that, you know this laptop's not moving anywhere. They're the best feet I've ever seen on a laptop, hands down. So I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the problems I ran into while using this laptop. Now, the laptop is great, it's true, but it does not, it's not perfect. There are some few things that I'm really just kinda, kinda irk me inside a little bit. Like, for starters, uh, the speakers. Why on earth are they under the laptop? Uh, you know, you have the speaker, and there's just two of them, they're really tiny, uh, they sound kinda tinny, uh, and you know, there, I said it, the speakers aren't perfect. Do they work? Yeah, they work, and they're gonna work for the majority of people, but they're just not very good. I suggest that, th that they take the speakers, put them either in the keyboard or on the front here. I mean, you do have these sides right here where they could have potentially put them, but uh, I think it was a design element. They chose not to go with that, and so they're gonna pay the price for people who actually like to have good audio. Uh, but other than that, these speakers are gonna be good enough for just about 90% of all people. It's only those audio files that are really gonna care about that kind of quality. Personally, I would have really liked to have a number pad. I see that they have all this empty space here. And again, it's probably some kind of aesthetic choice that they designed, decided to pick, but why not just shift the keyboard a little bit to the left and add a number pad? Uh, that would probably go a long way in making this device just that much more usable. I did experience an issue with uh, coming out of sleep and hibernation. So when you close the laptop and it's in a low power watt state, occasionally I open the laptop back up and the battery is just dead. I'm not sure how this keeps happening, but the battery every now and then just gets completely drained. So in other words, there's no really good sleep or standby mode. I'm not sure if this is a problem with Dell or if it has something to do with Windows 10 optimization. Uh, I would probably think it might have something more to do with Windows 10. I do remember Windows 7 not being very good with that, and Windows 8 was a disaster. So Windows in general just isn't perfect. But the weird thing about that is, um, like on the MacBooks, I noticed that even in the Windows environment, I don't have that problem where when I open it up, it comes out of sleep. It has tons of battery life, so I'm not sure what's going on with that but it is a problem I did encounter a couple times. So all in all, I love this thing. Uh, it's got these amazing rubber feet that by far are the best that I've seen on a laptop. Once you place it on there, it's gonna stay on there and it ain't going anywhere. Uh, for a Windows-based laptop, it's got one of the best trackpads I've ever seen. I mean, it, seriously, it does not get any better than this trackpad, simply because it's just big. Uh, a trackpad that's tall and wide is just, you're gonna be able to do a lot more tracking with that. Uh, so it just turns out to be a really good addition. Um, the keyboard is definitely better than, than um, most mediocre and low-end laptops, but I don't know how well it's gonna compare to like the MacBook, for instance, uh, or the Surface Book. Those keyboards whew, are top-notch. You can't really compare them to this one here. This one here does occasionally will feel mushy. Uh, I do like the look of it. I think the look is very, uh, you know, kind of minimalist, and that's, I think that's why they removed the the uh, number pad that they no longer have there. Just kind of a downside. Everything about this laptop design just screams minimalist. Uh, you know, when you look in the back here, you don't really have that many screws. Just you know, four screws at the top, two screws on the side, and then four more at the bottom there. It's it's a good design. It's really good. Now, if I can, they can just tweak a few things. When it comes to the port selection, I was really pleased. It has all the ports I'd ever want and even a little bit extra. Like for instance, the USB-C, you know, I don't necessarily need that, but I can certainly see how that's gonna be really useful in the future once USB-C, you know, kicks off. The only thing I would like is them to add a third USB port. Uh, by the time I've plugged in my wired-based mouse and my portable hard drive, I can no longer plug in any other USB utilities. Of course, a hub can definitely fix that, but uh, I really do prefer to have three 
Uh, two is definitely fine. At least there's not one. There was just one that, that, would be, that would make me angry. So one of my biggest gripes about this laptop is the screen, screen glare. The, the screen just, it reflects everything. Even when it's on, it's gonna reflect just about anything that comes at it. Uh, even at full brightness, I, I see a reflection. It's still kind of there. Uh, really kind of annoying for me. So I really hope they fix that in the next edition. Um, I really like how they added the carbon fiber finish. There's no laptops that have carbon fiber finishes. Uh, you know, it, it's strong, it makes the laptop light. So it's just really kind of a smart move on their part. And it's just aesthetically pleasing, just quite nice. A lot of people are gonna drag about the, uh, you know, the camera at the bottom there that, that catches your nostril as you're talking on Skype or other video chats. Uh, personally, I don't even use those types of chat applications, so to me, it's really not a, it's not a deal breaker, and if I have to, I don't think I'm really gonna be annoyed by it or anything, I, whatever, basically, at this point. Uh, you know, it does come with the one terabyte SSD drive, which is great, I absolutely love that. It's the 16 gigabytes, so for video editors, uh, music production, you're gonna, be able to do all that without any problems at all. But my personal favorite is how they added the 960M graphics chip. So because of that, you're gonna be able to play all your favorite games, you're not gonna have any issues. And even in GPU accelerated tasks, um, like uh, 3D rendering of certain models, um, or even in video editing, I think you can actually utilize the GPU on here to help you render some of the clips or some of the uh, overlays you added, like text, that kind of thing. Uh, so the future is bright, the specs are powerful, and somehow it still manages to be thin and sleek. So problems aside, this thing is killer. It's still a really, really good laptop. Uh, would I replace it with my uh, MacBook Pro? I would say yeah, because you're not gonna get a 960M graphics chip uh, inside something you know, as thick as this and as thick as the MacBook Pros. They're just not trying to do that. Uh, unless you grab a 15 inch model, which is probably the most comparable model to this model here. Uh, so if you think you like this, but you wanna get a MacBook, just grab the 15 inch. But if you do like Windows based laptops, you really just kinda of can't find anything substantially better than what we have here. This is a pretty sweet computer. I wanna thank you for watching this far into the video. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to uh, leave a comment down below because I do reply to all my subscribers and viewers. Uh, I would say that uh, you watched this far, go ahead and subscribe. There's no reason for you not to. Uh, I am trying to develop this channel and if you have any suggestions on how I can improve the video, I always do take those into account because uh, I am trying to improve the video quality and the audio quality and all that. Uh, of course, it does take time to implement these things, but you're not gonna see it you know, be implemented right away, but I do wanna know what you think of this video. If there was something I didn't cover, or if you felt like I should have described something in a different way, just go ahead and leave a comment down below, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.